Okay, we are recording. Hi, everybody. This is David P. France, and I'm coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. And uh, before we get started, I want to make sure that you guys like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the uh, YouTube and BitChute channels. Um, I want to thank everybody as well for following uh, this journey as we introduce you to more um, creators and creatives. Today I'm speaking with Alessandro Litza, who I've spoken, this is the second time that we've spoken here, but I've known him for quite some time. He is based in Rome, Italy. Alessandro is a yoga instructor and holistic operator, which I'll ask him what that is uh, in a moment. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Alessandro? Good, thanks. You? I'm fine. I'm good. Um, tell tell us what what is a holistic operator? I don't know if we covered that the last video, but um, and then I'll ask you what, well, what's going on. You know what operator so. means, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, of course I know what an operator is. So right? just the holistic part. Well, uh, basically actually, holistic. It's uh -huh. it's similar to English when you say whole. And it comes mm -hmm. from the Greek word, which means whole again. So holistic operator is one who's got like a, a vision of the human being as being part of the whole picture. I see. So I when see. you relate to a human being, even if you're working on the fitness level or whatever, you're not uh -huh. just talking to a body, you're talking to the mind, to the body, and then to the soul. And if people have problems with the word soul, we can use emotional state. Right. rather than soul. I like soul a lot, but some people are a bit, you know, uh, <laughs> squeamish about the word <laughs> soul. So we can say whatever is about the emotions or the mind, so the thoughts and then the body. So we know nowadays that everyone is made up by these three things and yoga, which is my main uh, job or activity, is all about that because actually the meaning of yoga is union. It comes from the Sanskrit word it means a union and in fact when you do yoga you are thinking of the union of the three aspects of the human, be human being which is the soul the body and the mind so nice. being holistic operator it means that you can take over from yoga and whatever you're doing you're always thinking of the person you have in front of you considering the three aspects even if you're talking about food you're not talking about food like most people do nowadays it's all about chemistry you know you think about the ingredients or the vitamins or the minerals or whatever you're thinking also about the psychological impact the food can have on you and also the emotional impact the food can have on you and when you're treating someone which i mean i used to be a nutritionist before and i'm still doing some a bit some natural nutrition with my uh, students yoga students i'm giving tips i'm doing some consultations just one-to-one -one privately so when i'm talking to them i'm not talking just about the chemistry of food i'm talking about the relationship that people have with food and that involves thoughts and feelings as well so that's the holistic approach okay all right well tell, 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 <laughs> tell us what's going on in um in rome i mean the last time we talked to you it was not so long out uh or from the initial stages of allowing people to go out and so on. So, so what's yeah. going on? Uh, are you are you out able to walk freely, travel freely? What's the status? Well, of considering how it used to be, like not longer than a month ago, it's going. I mean, very well. I mean, I was expecting to have a very lousy summer with people not doing much, maybe not going on a holiday. I thought that a lot of places would be would be open because they were closed during, uh, you know, during springtime. So I thought maybe summer is going to be a, a winter time. You know, it's going to be hot, but maybe all the all the um, different jobs would stay open and blah blah blah. But actually, not. I have to say that it's it's looking pretty much like a normal summer, except that you see people going around with the masks. So mm -hmm. in the places, you know, when you go indoors, restaurants, museums, or wherever you go, you still have to wear a mask. But uh, people tend to do normal stuff like they would do normally in summertime. And of course, we're not traveling abroad. I mean, 
just a few people are traveling abroad because of what's happening, you know, because of this coronavirus, but we are traveling within Italy, which is nice. So I have a lot of friends that are on, on vacation at the moment, and I have to say, it seems pretty normal. I mean, mm. you, open, you open the TV, you put the TV on, and the news are all about the coronavirus, but I'm not switching on the TV, so I, I don't get brainwashed by that anymore because I didn't have to be honest. So for me, the first tip about health is to switch off the TV because it's like getting bombarded constantly about all these things. So if you don't watch the TV, yeah, you see people with the mask going around, but after all, it's not too bad. They're doing like uh, cinemas in the open. They're doing drive-in again, like it used to be in the 60s. So now you can go to some places uh, in Rome when you drive your car and you stay in your car and watch the screen, like, like in the 60s. Yeah. And they came because of the coronavirus. So some things are not too bad, to be honest. So I mean, I have to say, it's, it's, I mean, I just read that there were more cases now today. There's been an increase of cases mm -hmm. of coronavirus mm -hmm. in Rome and some parts of Italy, like it's going up again. So some people are talking about a possible lockdown again. Hopefully not. But if you don't read the news, if you don't know what's happening, you know, in the hospitals or whatever, when you walk around, it looks pretty decent. Oh, sure. And uh, with regard to your your practice, how has how has that been uh, going for you? I mean, people are still staying fit. I know that you said something about, or you told me earlier that you have been working out at home. Do you find that more? Yeah, more I mean, I teach yoga, so I do my practice of yoga for myself. I always work out. I used to work out in the gym because I like doing something totally different from yoga because I need to detach psychologically because yoga being my job for me even if i'm doing for myself which is beautiful i always think it's something that i do for work as well so i like to do something completely different like i always did and it's for me it's going to the gym and doing something totally different which is like you know training with the weights and everything mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. since the lockdown i started doing stuff in my terrace luckily i have a nice terrace and i bought some kind of you know those cables expandable that you can do a lot of attractions a lot of movements and then i used my creativity i had some tables i start i started lifting tables benches whatever i could find doing like lunges you know for my legs with a piece of table on my <laughs> on my back and basically i enjoyed it because um being you know being used to being inside a gym and then being now in my terrace under the sun, you know, getting a tan while I'm working out and I'm putting the music on and having my own tea while I'm, you know, working out. I started to enjoy mm -hmm. that. So wh even when they opened the gyms again, which was in June, I decided to carry on at least till September, October. So I've been training now since March by myself. And I have to say, I'm, I'm glad with the results. You're glad with the results. Before you, you talked about the, earlier you had gained a bit of weight i mean you have been has this training well, inside actually helped you to 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 maintain or or reduce the weight yeah i mean it's not that i gained weight i mean i was looking at myself and since i've been eating a bit i mean uh I, I would i could say nervously because you know you come back from work you're hungry so you eat a piece of chocolate and then you eat it again blah 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 i tend to like sweets anyway so i was looking at myself and i wasn't as trimmed as i used to be and being kind of um, uh i wouldn't say like a fitness fitness freak because i don't like the word the word but i mean i do care for my body as well not just for for my soul i care for everything i care for the old package I thought that I could lose like one kilogram or two maybe to uh -huh. look better and feel better. Uh -huh. And it actually happened because I started to eat less and then I embraced uh, this thing that I used to do in the past, which is fasting. But instead uh -huh. of doing the old fasting thing where you don't eat for one day or two days, which is very like overwhelming in a way because you also need to have some time to rest if, if you're not eating. And for me, being like a yoga instructor, it's hard to find like a whole day when I'm not doing any physical exercise. So I found this new thing which I read about for a long time called intermittent fasting, where you basically stop eating for 16 hours only. So it's not even a whole day. And you can have like a break 
say that you eat 6 p.m. No, sorry, 4 p.m. on one day and then resume eating 8 p.m. next day. So you're basically just quitting dinner. So you mm -hmm. might have a, a, a lunch and maybe a snack around 4 p.m. and then you start eating again uh, for breakfast the day after. Or maybe you can just skip breakfast and have dinner and then lunch the day after. Basically, you take a break for 16 hours because that's the amount uh, that you need in order to get into ketogenic state or whatever it's called, which is basically when you stop using carbs and sugars to get energy and mm -hmm. you start using yeah. fat. And it's all pros, it means that you're using fat that you don't need, so it can help you to lose weight if you want to lose weight. But besides that, it's very good because it actually you're giving a break to your digestive system, which works constantly, all the time. Mm -hmm. And giving a break to your digestive system means that it gets, you get, in the long run, like a, a rejuvenating effect. It's like uh, you get hormones starting to work again, and you get a lot of... Uh, side effects benefit be, benefits from this fasting and i've been doing that like once a week so far for five weeks mm -hmm. and it's also a psychological thing because you think you feel like you want to eat again and then you say no no i don't have to do it. and then you carve yourself again so it's it's good for your discipline so again you could look at that in a in an holistic approach so you're doing something physical which is not eating but also you know that you're training your mind not to eat and also to change your, your thoughts. So when you think like you want to eat something, then you don't think about it. And then you learn how to direct your thoughts and temptations, whatever you want to call them. And then you build up your discipline. And I like that. So it's, 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 it's um, another big work that you can do for yourself. It's a, it sounds really exhausting, right? It's a lot. I mean, I think it, <laughs> it sounds, I will say this. I will say this, it does require discipline for sure, right? For sure. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like, even as you're talking about it, I can feel the discipline <laughs> moving through my own body. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm already thinking about, okay, so when would I sleep? Right? You know, because because when you take on something new, right? Anything, yeah. it does stress your body it does stress you know i'm going through some things myself right now so i can understand what that what additional you know fasting would do yeah i, do, I mean if yeah it, if it comes from you no one uh -huh. is imposing that it's not that your doctor is telling you to do that uh -huh. you decide to do it so the moment you decide you're already there halfway at least mm -hmm. so you're already there and at the end of the day, I find a lot of satisfaction. I call it the point of no return because there's a point when you feel like, oh, I want to eat now. And then you say, no, I don't have to eat. And then you go over that stage and then you're fine. And then when you wake up in the morning, I'm like, you know what? It's not too bad. I could go on for another three hours maybe. And then you eat. And when you eat again, when yeah. you eat again, it's amazing. Also, your skin is different. But when you eat again, your skin I mean, is different. First, how, how how is your skin different? What is your skin doing di different? Well, it looks, I mean, it might be like a, a just, I don't know, uh, an impression because you know uh -huh. you're doing that, but it looks cleaner. It looks like uh, uh -huh. uh, more radiant because it's uh -huh. like for 16 hours. It's like you we always eat, what, three times a day. The only break we get is mm -hmm. from, you know, dinner, which is very late sometimes, to breakfast. So usually there's only an eight, eight hour break, if not even less than that, with food. If you think that you're doing, for once, you're doing 16 hours, then there's so many processes going, you know, around in you and outside. And you see it. I mean, I, I've done it before. I mean, I did, I did fasting like for a proper, like three day fasting. I mean, it was just one whole day of fasting, but it was mm -hmm. a preparation day before, the day before when you eat very little. And the day three, when you eat very late, so the, the day in between where you don't eat at all. So it was like a three-day process. But that was a lot. I used yeah, to do it like a, every change of season. And then I, then for some reason, I stopped doing it. But this one, 16 hours, it's not too bad. I mean, anyone can do it. It's not going to impact so much in whatever you're doing with your activities, as long as you are resting as well when you're mm -hmm. not eating. I mean, you're not doing any kind of physical exercise and it's there's so many 
I mean, information online about this, all the benefit that you can get. And mm -hmm. I think it's great. Okay. So, I mean, not people don't have to do it, but it's one of the many yeah, things sure, that sure, sure, sure. I mean, of course. people can try and see. And also, besides the, the physical benefit, it's just mm -hmm. the way to mold, you know, your, your mind. You know, you're just, you know, when I say mind over matter, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. So it's willpower, discipline. You, you're actually working on that as well. So when you said you were looking in the mirror and you said you didn't like what you were seeing or something to that effect. Well, I'm exaggerating. Yeah. You're exaggerating, of course, of course, of course. So, so, yeah. so can you look at yourself as you are now in terms of your age and versus 20 years before, right? 20 years, you as a, you know, 20 years before. And can you see, um, what did you like about what, what you were doing physically as a 20 year old and is it different than what you're doing now, right? I mean, you know where I'm going with this. It's almost like all of this exercise and nutrition and yoga, how is it helping you now versus when you were, I guess, 20 years old, you were, you know, 25, you were not doing all this, right? Well, we're talking about, I don't know, uh... Jurassic time. <laughs> I mean, it's like when I was twenty. It's like oh, you mean like in terms of age, right? Or I would say let's let's say no. I, I didn't have any knowledge. I didn't have any knowledge when I was twenty. When I was in my twenties, I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I Did you work out? Anything. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I used to do. I started doing some workouts when I was fourteen. When I was in my high school time. Okay. Yeah? Okay. But. I became very, you know, constant, very, you know, disciplined. I would say from year, from age 19 up to now, then I never stopped. And mm -hmm. I moved abroad. I changed places where I used to live. So I didn't have the same gym to go to, but I always did something. I would buy some tools and do exercise in my room. I, that kind of rolling thing that you do on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I would, would take with me, put in my suitcase, I will have whatever, I'll do push-ups. I always did something. Since I was 19 up to now, I, I, couldn't, I cannot stop. It's you cannot part stop. Of my life. So I need to work out, I need to move, call it yoga, call it whatever, uh, biking, whatever. I need to do it. Uh -huh. Because now it's part of my lifestyle. It's, I, I mean, if I need to stop for whatever reason, I'm not happy. I do stop for a week or two, uh -huh. during a year but that's for me it's like a way to rest i mean to give a break to your body so i will right. train with weights twice a year for like a, a week time maybe more if i'm going on vacation that's the time when i I'm stop doing it yeah. but i i see that like a nice thing to do because i think your body needs a break from the normal workout that you give every 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 day of your life or every week in your life mm -hmm. but over the years i never stopped Mm -hmm. And something happens to me, like I got injured in my shoulder many years ago. I carried on trying to do something different. But I was teaching yoga anyways. So I had to do it. And I preferred to keep the pain for a longer time rather than recall. I know it doesn't sound nice to say this, but the choice was to stop for a few months doing nothing at all or to carry on and have a very longer process to heal everything and i chose number two i said i'd rather go for a longer time to recover as long as i'm still doing something also because it's part of my job right. so going back to what you said when i was in my 20s i didn't know anything i didn't know anything about nutrition and um, i was training but but what prompted was, what pro what prompted this um quest for knowledge in this space right so so obviously you you've moved into um, you, you know, you've done nutrition, you do yoga, you've talked about mind, body, soul. Like, what was, what was? Well, yeah. it just I always, I always ask questions. Always, mm -hmm. it's part of my being. I always ask questions, and I always thought, you know what? The way I'm eating, why am I eating this way? I'm thinking, yeah, I know I'm Italian. Italian diet is good. Mediterranean diet is good, but. Uh, why am I eating this way? And I'm thinking that's because my parents taught me there. It's not that they taught me, they, they did it and I saw it. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm inheriting whatever they were doing. If they were doing, they inherited it from their, their own parents. Yeah. But I was thinking, 
do they have any knowledge about food in general or they're just eating out of habit? And then that's the second thing, the people eat out of habit. So if you're an American, you're used to eating a certain way because everyone eats that way. You're mm -hmm. in Italy eating a certain way because everyone eats that way, but no one knows why you're eating that way. You know what I'm saying? No yeah. one knows. And I wanted to know, why am I eating this way? Am I, re am I eating right or not? So since I asked questions, I started to open books and read whatever I could read about nutrition. And I had moved uh, to live by myself. So that, that was the time when I had to cook my own food. I wasn't staying at home with my parents. So I have to cook my own food. So I'm thinking, what am I buying to eat? Or what am I cooking? And then that's when I became very curious and I started to study. And also learned that what we call Mediterranean diet is not what we're actually doing in Italy every single day we kind of changed that. It used to be different. We used to mm. have much more pulses in our diet than we do today. Mm. We didn't have much meat like we're doing nowadays. Mm. So the so-called Mediterranean diet has changed as well and people don't know about it. So it's nice to read about it and also to, to, to get knowledge about other kind of, um, uh, you know, diets from all over the world and put them all together because every diet has got something good about it. So take, maybe get some Japanese food together with Italian food, together with something else, uh -huh. mix it all together. You can get the best version of it. So uh -huh. I got very curious because I've always been curious. So at some point in my life, I wanted to have knowledge. They mm -hmm. say knowledge is power, right? Knowledge I can guess. Power. Yeah, sure. They do say that, right? Get I need to get knowledge about stuff. Like nowadays, I always get knowledge about things, even about whatever they're talking on the news. I'm thinking, is that the right knowledge or is what they want us to know about it? I see. Or is that all there is to know about it? So that's what I'm still asking myself. And that's why I always do investigation about anything. It's, it's part of my character. Uh -huh. So can you tell, or can you show us rather? Some, some yoga position in the chair. Last time we just talked, right? So I think it was a good idea for you. Just show us something that you can do in front of, at your desk while you're working. I don't know if I'm gonna- Oh yeah, there's a lot you can do. Yeah, I mean, you can start doing some- Like what, what would movements. be? What would be- uh, It's so much. Like you can even just do, raise your shoulders close to your ears and drop them. You can do some rotations. Uh -huh. change the direction so that's good for uh -huh. your neck for your shoulders you can bring your hands together you know you put them intertwine your fingers uh -huh. and go like that very high up stretch and then bring them forward squeeze your chest go back there open it and then you can do a nice twist which is good for your back if you're sitting for very long hours at your desk then you want to do a twist for your back so what do you do when you twist you go on the other side Put, I mean, I'm using my left hand to uh -huh. go on my right knee and my right hand to go at the back of the chair. And then uh -huh. I get two hands moving the opposite direction. Then I can lift and twist and look at my shoulder at the back. Uh -huh. And then go back, front, the other side. And again, lift and twist. Yeah? Do like yeah. a kind of spring movement. And that's very good for your spine. And then if you're willing to actually get off your chair, you can do a lot of things on your desk. A lot yeah. of stretches, put your hand on your desk like this, mm -hmm. but then standing, just go like that, and really yeah. stretch and elongate your spine. So yeah. much. Actually, I did a course about this because I used to do some workshops about well-being and stress management, mm -hmm. which I did in Rome for the embassies, you know, stuff yeah, yeah. On, in the embassies in Rome. And I actually created a whole program. It was like a theory, but it was also about practical exercises that you can do while you're sitting on your chair. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Well, well, what's, what's, what's interesting though is um, even when you're doing it, like, and maybe this is just because I'm in a, there's a lot of things going on with me all happening at once, right? So I'm thinking like, oh man, I need music. Like if I'm gonna do something like that, I need music or I need this and that. You really do have to get in a good space. You have to, in my opinion, you have to really have a space where, which is clean and not cluttered. And, and so how do you do that in your house? I mean, how, are, how do you manage? Do you keep your um, apartment or you have a certain place in your apartment that is like free of 
anything else but like the mat or my place is immaculate <laughs> i mean it's like i hate mess i just uh -huh. hate mess you hate mess. my mother used to say a messy room is like it's because of a messy mind or sure, a messy sure, brain sure, sure. but that's what she used to say so it's like clean your space because if you if your space is messy you are messy yourself your sure. life is messed up so i really like <laughs> i really yeah. like my environment to be very neat uh -huh. clean and everything and it's spotless and i rather than cleaning it or tidying it up which i hate i keep uh -huh. it clean and i keep it tidy keeping uh -huh. it is better than putting it later on uh -huh. so i always put things to the original place i i, I mean i knew people i used to live with uh, other people you know in the same place you know, mm -hmm. you know when you have uh, flatmates or whatever right. Right. So I remember those people, I mean, there's something over me, that they would take something from here and leave it yeah. there. All take right. something from there and you don't and do that. here constantly. And then after an hour, the place will be a mess. Uh -huh. I'm not like that. I take it and I put it back to the place where I took it from, for everything. And I keep uh -huh. it clean. And for me, not only it's um, a manifestation of who I am, a tidy and very precise and organized person, which I am when I'm working, but also it's like an aesthetic an aesthetic thing i mean it's nice to be surrounded by beauty so when mm -hmm. you look around everything is nice you know you have a nice picture there you have a nice flower there you have a nice piece of furniture on the other side i think it's a reflection that the fact that um, you care for yourself uh -huh. you're not letting yourself go when people start letting themselves themselves go the first thing you notice is their body first uh -huh. it starts to you know change yes and then after that the house you know mm -hmm. the apartment is this i call it the second body baby your second okay. your body is your home and uh -huh. your home is the second home and then you see that all around when people are depressed the first thing you see is the place is a mess yeah. there's no beauty anymore yeah. and i'm thinking if you're going through depression or hard time whatever everyone is at some point in their lives it's very important to still care for these things because these things they are helping you not to let yourself go you know and also when you put your own, you, when you put your eyes on something nice to look at then your vibrations rise for some reason sure, sure you're sure, looking sure. at something beauty wherever that is it could be a nice building piece of art outside but it could be something in your place a nice picture whatever then your vibrations rise and that's very important so it's not just something that you're doing I don't know, which is not practical. Even the little things that you have in your home can have a practical impact. I, in your I, life. I understand what you're talking about. I understand. Yeah. So I, I, how do you? It's yes. For me, it's just like breathing. It's it's the way it has to be. Uh, <laughs> well, let, let's put it this way: in my apartment, now I have organized certain rooms that I don't mess up. Yeah. And then there's one room, which is the room I'm in right now, which is like. It is like uh, I would call it my office, my creative office. <laughs> and it's so dark. I can see it's a dark room, yours. Well, I always use. I I started to do these interviews in the evening, right? right. When, when people in the United States were, you know, back from work. So okay. I didn't. I didn't want to like. I wanted to have some consistency in the look of even dark you know was doing the video from right so i don't want to change up like, oh it's light outside oh it's dark it's light i wanted th there to be some consistency okay right? you're not hiding something there like a dead well, body or something there's a lot in the background <laughs> there's a lot in the background right i mean there's a lot if you knew if you could see and 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 you know in the next 18 months i'll have to move to another place so i'm all kinds of things are happening with me i have a new job and I am, they asked me if well, I could. That's, that's the thing for most people at the moment. So much change. I mean, we yeah, see it every like, I'm, 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 I'm going home. through changes with my jobs as well. So yeah. it's like, luckily, I'm not changing my place because I really like it, the, the way I arranged it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Is there anything else? What else did we say that we we're going to talk about? We did, we, we, you gave us some, um, you, you also gave, you were doing something like that. this was another thing oh, for the shoulders yeah yeah the shoulder uh, the shoulders yeah yeah like you press them this way 
and that's good. And you, and you don't get bored doing you you don't get bored doing this kind of exercise of movement. Or if you do, what do you do? If you get bored, what do you I mean? mean how, how do you keep from getting bored? In life, in general. No, <laughs> I'm talking about in terms of exercising. But I don't get bored. Because you don't get no, bored? Oh no, no, because people are obsessed with working out. I mean, people uh -huh. they care who care for their bodies. I understand. Like work out. I'm not obsessed. I'm all, all I'm doing is three hours a week. Three hours a week, which is nothing. That's for fitness. And then mm -hmm. I'm doing yoga. That's another thing for me. Yeah. So yoga is a working. It's not. It's not a workout. So when uh -huh. I'm doing fitness, I'm working out. If I'm uh -huh. doing yoga, I'm working in. I even see. if I'm using my body. But when I'm working out, so I'm doing fitness, three hours a week, how can I get bored? Three hours a week, come on. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> some people doing, Look, I'm some, just saying people, some people I know that do two hours a day, I'm like two yeah, hours a, a day. I'm very yeah. low maintenance. My oh, okay. philosophy is low maintenance because okay. low maintenance, you can do it for a life, for, you know, for a lifetime, like I've uh -huh. been doing it. Three uh -huh. hours a week, wherever you are, you can always do it. And that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Keep it easy. Okay. So I try to get the best with the minimum, not the minimum, with the right effort. And that's mm -hmm. it. That's me. I don't want to have more. I don't want to do more. That's it. Mm -hmm. So I don't get bored. It's not enough mm -hmm. to get bored. Not enough to get bored. I would have to do much more to get bored. Uh, well, I, I'm, I, have, I keep saying, oh, I'm going to, I have improved over the last couple of months, right? So I have improved, but I know that, that I can do better than what I'm doing. All right, so that'll be the next thing. Um, yeah, for the for for starting in September. All right, so I, I know I, I've 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 been doing September well. is the new Monday. <laughs> what? September's the September new Monday. Is the new Monday. I mean, yeah, of course, of course. It's like I'm doing a Monday. I'm doing a uh, September. Yeah, of course, of course. I, I mean, you can already see I'm, I'm I'm dreading I'm dreading the whole thing. It's not so. Anyway, look, I'm going to let you go. But is there anything else that you would like to to leave us with? With regard I to had, no, I mean, we covered a lot of different stuff. We covered a lot, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, Alessandro, um, have a great uh, evening in uh, Rome. It's hot Thank there. Right? It should be cooling down in the evening. But um, it, will it be a, a scorcher tomorrow as well? Will it be very hot tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, this is normal. This is that time of the year when it's like you get the... the, the the, the worst temperatures, you know, very hot mm. ones. But I mean, I have a terrace. It's good to have a terrace if you yes, live in yes, Rome. Yes, yes, because yes. I sit outside for a few hours in the evening and I look at the stars and I read my book or it's, it, the, the night time is my favorite part yeah. of okay. summertime. Okay, okay. Look, I, 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 will, I, I, I will say this. I'm gonna make it my duty to really investigate how to relax more because I, I tried to do it last weekend and I just was not successful. I only could relax for one day and then I came back home, right? So I was uh, in, the, in the southern part, southern French uh, part of Switzerland and then I said, okay, I got to come back, right? I was near uh, Lake Geneva, but I could only right. do one day of relaxation, right? It, it really- Nothing. Didn't. Uh, yeah, I can't do nothing. I, it's really, you know, I, I really have issues with just doing nothing. So anyway. uh, that's the, the main problem of our society nowadays, doing nothing. Oh, yeah, sure. It's so hard to do nothing. Yeah, well, look, I try to do nothing better and better each time, right? But right now I'm still having issues. <laughs> You're getting better at doing nothing. Anyway, no, have a great... We're about, huh? we all about achieving stuff and doing yeah, things. You know how I am. You know how I am. I'm very, very, very type A. Not necessarily undercover, but I, I'm a type A. I'm type A. Personality. People don't necessarily think it. And so I, I like to work. I like to work. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And, you know, uh, and providing us an update of what you're up to. We, we're going to upload the video tomorrow, right? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Enjoy, enjoy your evening. Eh? Thank you. Take care. Take care, sir. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.